if you will find the second chapter of Micah. I want to share with you what I have been praying about all week. And while you're finding the scripture, let me just say that the Lord has taken us since last April on a very interesting journey, and everybody in this room knows it. Those that are watching by video um, probably have picked up on that. That the Lord has called CK and me by visions and revelations into the forefront, so to speak, or at least into the public arena as far as national things. Now, the Lord has prepared me for that over the years. Over the last, oh, since about 2010, primarily, and then in 2013, he added to it different visions that uh, I've had, and the Lord has um, drawn me as a warrior into the heavenlies to see things, to pray about things on a national level, not just on a local or an individual level. And so every time that I preach, uh, I always wonder what it is that the Holy Spirit is going to have me share. Because uh, there's part of me from just past history, being in the ministry as long as I have, that wants to just teach, even prophetically, miraculously, to the local congregation. Uh, but he keeps calling me to release things in the spiritual atmosphere on the national level. So everything that I preach pretty much these days is applicable to both of those realms. So I want you to think about that. But if you found Micah chapter 2, verse 13, we're going to read one scripture. It says, the one who breaks open will come up before them. They will break out, pass through the gate, and go out by it. Their king will pass before them with the Lord at their head. The one who breaks open. It also says in the King James, the breaker goes forth. <laughs> Other translations are similar in that the one who breaks through, the one who pushes through. And we understand that this actually is a prophetic scripture about the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah. As you read earlier in the chapter, in the context of this, Micah, by the Spirit of the Lord, is talking about the oppression on God's people and how that they are held back in so many different ways. They're held back spiritually. They're held back uh, physically because of uh, opposing um, peoples, armies, etc. And so there's a lot of bondage. And not only that, but we also find it's kind of like, you know, in Isaiah where it talks about we as blind men grope for the wall and that we search for a deliverer and we don't find one. And that whole situation spiritually of wandering through darkness and, and the Lord wants to break them out of it. And so prophetically in verse 13, what the Lord is saying, or God is saying through Micah is that, there will come one with a breaker anointing upon him. The Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah. And the breaker anointing is to break you out of the containment, to break you out of the shackles, out of the prison that you have been in. Now you hear me talk a lot about how that the kingdom of God is invading this earth and that we as the army of God rise up and we go and we take the land. Okay? Uh, and that's one analogy that is, uh, is very applicable. It's something that we must keep up on our minds. That we are advancing on the enemy's territory. We are delivering people. We're jerking people out of darkness, out of hell. And, uh, it, you know, like Reinhard Bonnke used to always say, is plundering hell and populating heaven. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, and, and, and we're getting people healed and, and delivered and all the power and the great things of God. But in this analogy, it's kind of from the opposite direction. When it talks about the breaker anointing here, it is the one, the breaker, who comes to deliver them out of the bondage, out of all forms of bondage. In other words, the breaker anointing is a breakthrough anointing. It's bursting the gates open so that we can leave the bondage. It's tearing down the walls 
so that we can escape the jails and the strategies of the enemy that try to keep us bound up, the body of Christ or even individually. And so what I would say right now is anybody in here individually, that uh, there are areas in your life where you find yourself in bondage and you find yourself up against impossibilities by your own natural flesh to overcome those situations that today there is a release of breaker anointing upon you for that. I also encourage every single person in here to let you know and those that are watching by video that there is a breaker anointing that is not only on an individual level but also extends up even to a national level. And that breaker anointing is upon America now. Amen. And that breaker anointing is breaking all things. Uh, if you look with me at Isaiah 61, and I'm, I'm going to share what I at least want to call the lack of mole um, vision. Uh, you'll understand that in a few minutes. But let me give you some scriptures. In Isaiah 61, Hallelujah. You'll get a kick out of the whack-a-mole. <coughs> Remember, Jesus, the breaker anointing, the one who breaks us out of all bondages. Verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. Me. Remember that the breaker is the Christ, mm -hmm. and the Christ is the anointed one. Mm -hmm. So that's why we call it a breaker anointing. Now we must understand that initially the breaker anointing was applied to Jesus Christ when he broke the devil's back. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. When he broke the power of sin and death. When he raised from the dead, and he sent the Holy Spirit to come and live in our hearts so that we can be saved. He broke that whole spiritual darkness. Hmm. All right? Salvation. Mm -hmm. However, you cannot have a large, over-encompassing, all-encompassing anointing that doesn't trickle <laughs> down into specific areas. It's just a spiritual dynamic. It's the way it works. So because of salvation has come to us, there are great avenues of salvation and deliverance that happen on many, on multiple levels in our own individual lives. The anointing, the breaker anointing, also carries with it, as it flows down, specific areas where that breaker anointing manifests in individual lives, such as today. I guarantee it, but also in national scene. And that's what's happening right now. An aspect of the great breaker anointing on the Lord Jesus is now manifesting in the United States of America and other areas of the world to break through. To break through what? To break through the opposing forces that try to bring bondage. And I want to talk to you a little bit about the dragon after we get through some of these scriptures. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes and the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord that he may be glorified. Hallelujah. All right, that's that breaker anointing that Jesus brought. You know that uh, he even quoted that in Luke 4. Turn with me to Luke 4. Let's go to the New Testament for a couple of scriptures. Verses 18 through 21. Now remember in verse 17, 
uh, Jesus had come into the synagogue there and he was handed the book. He asked for the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. See, he assumed that place because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Then he closed the book, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, today, this scripture is fulfilled in your ears, your hearing. Wow. Well, they didn't like that at all. Well, let me tell you, I feel it in the spirit. The breaker anointing is building steam. And it's flowing across our land. <laughs> Hallelujah. Just a couple more scriptures. Acts 10, verse 38. And then I will explain these things a little better. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. God anointed. You see the progression? What I'm trying to share with you today is that Jesus, the Messiah, the Christ, the anointed one, was called the breaker. The one who is able to break all bondages, spiritually, mentally, physically, socially, economically, etc. In that anointing that was upon him, the Spirit of the Lord was there in order to cast off restraints, uh, those things that restrain, in order to cast off the oppression, to cast off spiritual death, but to cast off even things in the natural realm. Because what happens in the Spirit must manifest in the natural realm. And when he came, he claimed Isaiah 61 for himself and said, this is in me, that breaker anointing. It's fulfilled in your ears, in me. And then he went about raising the dead, healing the sick, preaching the kingdom. I mean, he, he exploded the power of the kingdom on the scene because he's the king of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And that anointing was there. And it, the scripture then declared that that anointing was to not only heal the sick, which is a major physical focal point, but it was by breaking the oppression and the bondage of the devil. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. One more scripture, I think. Look at Colossians 2. Remember that in Hebrews and what is it? Is it in Peter? Where it says, uh, I forgot the exact address of that second one, but where it says that he came to destroy the works of the devil. That's the breaking. I love it. Then Colossians 2 verse 15. It says, having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. Hallelujah. In other words, he defeated the enemy. When it said public spectacle, it's talking about in the spiritual realm, there was such a shift, such a breakthrough, such a change by the light and the power of God through the breaker anointing that it not only delivered people from spiritual death, brought them into the kingdom of God, but that manifest, manifested in the natural realm by the breaking of all oppressive things that the enemy brought on the earth as a result of the curse. <coughs> all right? Praise God. Wow. The breaker anointing. Um, 
when I was praying this week, one of the things that I saw <laughs> in the spirit was a whack-a-mole. <laughs> is there anybody in here that has ever been to a carnival or a county fair and you got those, you know, you talk about those machines? Yeah. And they give you this rubber mallet and all of a sudden this plastic mole pops up out of this hole. There's a number of holes and different, and the mole pops up and then you whack it. And if you get it in time and hit it, this other one pops up and then this one pops up and you're going around trying to whack those things. Okay? And if you're coordinated fast enough, then you win the game. Otherwise, they're faster than you are. Well, what happened is in the spirit, I saw that. And the Lord began talking to me. But every time that the mole would pop up, yeah. it would transform into a roaring lion. Hmm. And I saw a hand whack the mole lion. Hmm. And then real fast, and then one would pop up over here, a mole, and then transform into a roaring lion and hmm. whack it. And it was going like this all over the place. And the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and he said, don't be confused by all of the areas that the enemy pops up. Uh, there is an ins a, a wicked, insidious spirit out there that is manifesting in many different areas. It's an antichrist spirit. Mm -hmm. Antichrist will for the body of Christ. Antichrist will for America and the world. And that spirit that's out there is what the Lord called a dragon. And he said that the dragon, of course, we understand the symbolism stuff there for Satan, serpent, dragon, so on. But he said behind it is, uh, is a spirit of death. And of course, I, you know, my mind went to the scripture and how that it says that uh, he came to destroy him who had the power of death. That is the devil. And so we have the ability to break that personification of the enemy and of death and all of his ways. And the Lord began talking to me about some things that I have, have known for quite some time, but just didn't really have uh, the Lord say so. And that is this whole insidious um, group of people that are trying to run America and also the world. Mm. The Lord showed me that there are seven. He said that there are seven main personalities in the earth today. I understand that there's there's more, but he said all of them are rich and all of them are um, atheists. They're secularists and have the hidden agenda that's the antichrist agenda to secularize the world in a one world government. And he's and like I said, there are seven principal. He said, out of the seven, there are three. And out of the three, there is one. And his name is George Soros. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And so all I can tell you is what the Lord said. Yes. All right. The whack-a-mole. It pops up. That Roaring lion, the symbolism, of course, is, uh, you know, the enemy, the enemy's strategies and stuff through it. Um, what the Lord also called the dragon, the dragon is behind it. We have been praying about um, the ruling spirit of Jezebel and Pharisee all along. And you guys have believed me, and I've, sh I've shared this, when the Lord gives me these visions when he takes me up in the in the second heaven and he shows me these things it is not only for my benefit and also for the body of christ but for an area there of the warrior 
uh, and me using that authority in the spiritual realm. And he does it in a way that makes sense to me. It's him speaking and revealing to me. He may speak to other people in other forms and use other analogies. And I have no problem with that. Um, it's kind of like, bless her heart. Um, uh, Kathy, wasn't that a great meeting when she was here? Kathy Walters. Oh, I love her. I love her. And we had a discussion uh, a little bit about you know, what spirit was coming against America. And she said that the Lord showed her that it was an Egyptian spirit. Yeah. Okay. And I said, well, the Lord showed me that it was, or that at least a part, what we have been dealing with is the ruling political spirit of Jezebel and Pharisee. And so she said, no, that's not it. It's, <laughs> it's Egyptian spirit. Mm -hmm. And so um, I'm going to, talk to her and find out what she means by Egyptian spirit. But I will tell you this, is that it's uh, because George Soros, and this is not an anti-George Soros sermon, just like it is not a pro-Donald Trump sermon. They are only figureheads. They are personalities that the spirits occupy and dwell and move through. And the hand of the Lord is upon Donald Trump as part of the breaker anointing. It's not about Donald. It's about what the Lord wants to do. Can I tell you a, a little um, humorous joke? Sure. All right, a little story. I used this way back. <laughs> well, one day, there was a stable in Bethlehem. I'm sorry, in Jerusalem. And the keepers of the stable came. And they got this donkey. Now, this is not biblical, completely okay. It's a story. So they came and they got this donkey. And they took the donkey out. And it was just normal, you know. They, they usually use the donkey for various tasks and things during the day. And the other animals that were there in the stable. And the donkey was led out of Jerusalem. And there was somebody put on his back who was named Jesus Christ, and they led the donkey and Jesus back in to Jerusalem. At the end of the day, the donkey then was returned to the stable. And when he came in, it was not the drudgery kind of going out, the beast of the burden, um, you know, in order to fulfill the day's work as he had left. When he came back in, man, he was excited. He was happy. He was prancing. And the other animals looked at him and said, what happened to you? He said, oh, man, it was so great. He said, they took me out. And they outside of Jerusalem. And then they led me back in. And they laid robes and palm leaves and everything before me. And the people were waving and shouting, Hosanna. Hosanna comes the king. And man, I didn't know I was that important. <laughs> it's not the vehicle. It's the one who's riding on the vehicle. That's the way it is with Donald Trump. He is a wrecking ball. He is a steamroller. He is a fiery one. <clears throat> and all of that because the breaker anointing part of it has been attached to him by God. And the body of Christ is moving through that to change things, to break through. You understand what I'm talking about? Breakthrough. Well, that's the way that George Soros is. He carries an antichrist anointing. <clears throat> He's a secular Jew, does not believe, he is an atheist, he doesn't believe in any form of religion. He is a weirdly secular democratic supporter, basically meaning this, anything in his opinion that has any sense of control over the population needs to be eradicated. 
It doesn't matter if it's an oppressive regime. regime. It doesn't matter if it is a religion. If it is a social structure, a culture, if in his view, at least in my opinion, it, according to what he thinks, brings the population under some kind of control, he's anti that. That's what he wants to break. He's been involved with his money in financing five major revolutions since about 2000. He's used his money, he's used his influence to support every kind of progressive leftist agenda to change every culture in every country in the world that he can. Mm -hmm. And he was, he used his money primarily in the revolution in Serbia, Georgia, the United States through Barack Obama, Turkey, and Egypt. He's extremely upset that the Lord whack a mold <laughs> and he's trying everything, he and his cohorts, to switch things back. And so you get all these different things, and the Lord just keeps whack a mole that thing. There's an anointing, there is a breakthrough anointing that is here, and that is going to steamroll and continue to push. Now, it is imperative for the body of Christ to stay in its position of authority. Right. It's imperative that we continue to pray. Pray that prayer that we've been praying all along and continue all the way through Inauguration Day, but just continue praying because the leftist agenda is an antichrist, secular, atheistic agenda for globalization, for, um, I would say, for erasing any form of boundary that identifies a people or a culture or genders. It's very much for gender neutralization. There's no difference between uh, men and women. I mean, other than physical bodies, you can look at it, but otherwise, it's not. It emasculates men. Uh, it is for anything because it's atheistic there are no morals if there is no god then there are no morals that mankind is subjected to other than what mankind himself or themselves i should say stipulate for living in community with one another therefore any form of abortion is okay there is no God, there is no higher element, there is no, I mean, you know. Uh, and the list goes on. It has invaded that whole dragon, that whole, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep calling it because that's what I see in the spirit and what the Lord has dealt with me. That ruling spirit of Jezebel has invaded just about every aspect of American life over the last 20 years. It came to a full head. It, it was introduced quite through the Clintons. Uh, and then it came to a full head through Obama's presidency. And the Lord said, enough. Amen. It's time for the breaker anointing to break through. Amen. Break through. Praise God. Amen. And that's what's happening right at this point. The Bible says that the gates of hell shall not prevail against church. Right. The gates of hell represent the authority of the enemy. The authority of the Antichrist spirit. And the authority, no matter how subversive, how subtle, how wicked it is, in its attempt to reshape America, actually this you'll find this going on worldwide. Mm -hmm. Look at all the major, well, 
Brexit, for instance, and another. All these things are changing. There's a real cultural shift. Why? Because there's a spiritual atmosphere shift. I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, it can't stand against the church. The true power on the earth is in a faith-filled praying church. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, I'm excited about it. But listen, that's the negative part. I, let me say this real quickly, and then I want to get into some of the things that I do see coming. The reason that I talk about the ruling political spirits of Jezebel and Pharisee. A lot of people, they, they get mixed up, and they just think about Jezebel or Pharisee only on an individual level. Well, that person over there has got a Jezebel spirit. Or that person over there, they act like a religious Pharisee. And in their minds, they have trouble breaking out of that thinking. And so when we talk about Jezebel or Pharisee, on a ruling level, it, it doesn't make sense. It's like, well, no, 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 that's not it. It's got to be something else. No, Jezebel was a queen. She was a ruler. She was born the daughter of the king of Tyre. She was a high priestess in the temple of Baal. And when she married... Ahab, she was a queen. You're talking about a ruling spirit. You catch it? What was Pharisee? Pharisee wasn't Joe Blow down at the bar or in the local park. <coughs> Pharisee was ruling class. They were the religious, civil, and um, and religious. They were the civil and religious rulers of Israel, along with the Sadducees. Do you understand what I'm saying? They were rulers. They were ruling political people, thereby indwelled by ruling political spirits. That's what I'm talking about. Those spirits have been fighting over control of America for a long time. Jezebel comes from Europe. Pharisee, <coughs> primarily, comes also from Europe, but it comes in religious garb. They're fighting, but it's all smoke and mirrors because they're both spirits from the enemy to control. God is breaking <coughs> those spirits. <coughs> all right? <laughs> oh, I laugh because I, I just I can feel that breakthrough. Now, now I'm not just preaching on about national things right now, although that's where it starts. Understand something. The third John 3 principle is beloved. I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health, even as your soul prospers. The principle is that the physical prosperity and health of any person, family, nation is based upon the spiritual health of that person, family, nation. That principle says that in order for the breaker anointing that is flowing through our land right now to effectively change everything that Jesus wants it to, there must be a spiritual breakthrough first. 
that spiritual breakthrough has to come forth in revival, spiritual awakening. And that's going to change everything. There's what I call parallel anointings. There's no way that you can have revival in a nation without having revival in the individuals. Reverse, there's no way you can have revival on the individual level without it affecting and producing revival on a nation. It's a cultural change, a spiritual cultural change that manifests in all things physical. It is parallel anointings. That's one of the reasons why you have heard me say so many times when I talk to people, when they'll say, oh, I just love the Lord God, I submit entirely to God, but I don't submit to a pastor, to uh, the political leaders, to um, a spouse, to whatever. What you're telling me is that no, you're not submitting to God because all anointings and all spiritual dynamics are parallel on all levels. You can't submit to Jesus and then completely reject and dishonor all authority that Jesus has placed in the church and even in family units. Now, I know there's abuses and stuff that's going on, but I'm talking about the principle because it's parallel all the way through. And what you do on one level, affects the other. That's why I'm saying today that on an individual level, there is major breakthrough. There is a breaker anointing that has been gaining momentum and gaining steam for years, but particularly now, over the last year or so, the power of it has come forth and has really manifest, one manifestation at least, through Donald Trump winning the election. Why? See, so many people just can't figure it because they're you're thinking, oh, Lord, how do I say this? Sometimes it's difficult for me to express. Not just expressing what's in here, it's expressing spiritual dynamics, things that I see going on. <clears throat> All right. I saw in the spirit a road and I saw a five mile marker and I saw a 10 mile marker. And the Lord spoke to me and he said that the breaker anointing that is coming through now is beginning to break in the spirit and we'll find in the natural all of these different areas that the dragon, that the antichrist spirit, that the ruling spirit, political spirit of Jezebel primarily. Pharisee has kind of gone underground, trying to find other ways to stick his mollish head up to get whacked. <laughs> it's happening. It's going everywhere to all segments of society, our culture. I see five years and 10 years I started to ask the Lord, and I wasn't brave enough, <laughs> why it wasn't four and eight, because I'm thinking cyclically as far as, you know, political offices and things like that. And I didn't, because I realized, okay, you just go with what the Lord says. And so he said five years and 10 years. Over the next 10 years, there's going to be a major restructuring of the spiritual atmosphere over America. That means a major restructuring of the spiritual atmosphere over your life and over your family. And as those antichrist spirits, as I'm just calling them right now, those the influencers are broken and pushed back, the newness of God is going to manifest in breakthrough many different things. One of them is the economy. Of course, we've been praying about that, haven't we? But it's gonna happen. 
But that's why I said this whole thing all along, CK and I have been saying it's not about politics, it's about revival. Mm -hmm. It's about the breaker anointing. The economy is going to change. Why? Because, beloved, I wish above all things that you would, or I wish that you would prosper in all things, even, and, and be healthy, even as your soul prospers. Revival, spiritual awakening, that breakthrough in the spirit is what allows the Lord to touch these other areas and to manifest in the physical. It's happening. As revival ensues, the economy will get better. There will get um, more jobs, etc. I don't know exactly all. I'm just telling you what I see in the spirit. There will be advancements in health care. We don't know exactly what the health insurance situation in America is going to look like as we go along, but there will be a major change. But it's not just the health insurance. There's, there's more. There, there are going to be some major breakthroughs in scientific advancement. You got to understand that the Antichrist spirit actually holds those things back. Right. Mm -hmm. Every nation for the last 2,000 years that has embraced Christianity has had major developments in its economic, its health structure, its education scientific advancements, all of those kinds of things. Because those come with the breakthrough. Am I, mm -hmm. am I verbalizing it very well? Yes. Mm -hmm. You're going to find it in education. The Supreme yes. Court. Right. So the judicial system. I mentioned science, but also culture. Yes, there's a war going on out there. Yes, there's a fight for the soul of America. But the breaker anointing is there. Do you, I, I hope that people can understand that I am not a preacher of judgment, doom, and gloom. Right. <laughs> that doesn't mean that I don't see what the devil is doing. What it means is, more importantly, I see what Jesus is doing. Amen. <clears throat> that's why I want to flow with Jesus yeah. I want to preach what Jesus is doing mm -hmm. Jesus is the breaker and it was not just 2,000 years ago when he died and was rose from the dead was raised from the dead <laughs> the anointing's on me so strong I, it, it, it's a miracle I can even talk praise God so, it's that breaker anointing is still part of the Christ anointing. And when the Antichrist spirit rises up and tries to imprison people and nations, the Antichrist spirit has to be broken. Therefore, the Christ anointing is a breaker anointing to break it in the spirit and then down the line, break all of the areas that have been infected. That's why you're going to see five years and ten years. And that's as, fur, as far as fur. <laughs> as I've seen in the spirit. I told you I can't talk right now. I see in the spirit. But in the next five and then ten years... All of these tentacles being broken, 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 broken. Amen. But they have to be won by a praying church who will mobilize not only an intercession, but put feet to its intercession in going forth, in evangelizing, 
and in doing whatever's necessary, whatever the Lord leads each person to do. Because Christians, believers need to be in all segments of society. They need to carry their influence into all of those segments. Praise God. <laughs> so nationally and individually, things are going to get better, but it's going to be fought on our knees. It's going to be fought with the words of our mouth in proclaiming the word of the Lord, sharing Jesus with other people, etc. So let me kind of just wrap this together if I can, tie it in a nice, neat little bow. Um, I'm so excited. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I, because of what I've seen in the spirit, I'm so excited. That breaker anointing. What that means is that all of our prayers for our nation are finally being realized. You see that? It's kind of like, you know, the Jewish people have during various times where they were under oppression or they were in captivity. You know, during the Old Testament. And they'd pray and they would pray. And then God heard their prayers. Now, it wasn't that God just waited until they built up. I mean, you know, there's a whole lot of things in the spiritual realm that need to be worked uh, and orchestrated in order for full deliverance to come. That's why it has been years in the making right here in the United States. But God has heard our prayers. And the breaker anointing has been released. Now, I'm going to say that probably about 50 more times before I conclude today. <laughs> I want everybody to understand that the breaker anointing is here. One of the things that that means is that you don't have to make it happen. You have to get behind the anointing that makes it happen. Amen. Let that anointing be in you and flow through you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Align yourself with it. Wow. We're not issuing forth foxhole prayers. You know, we, we dug a foxhole. We're lying in it, protecting ourselves and praying somehow that the Lord will rescue us. No, this is an advancing intercession. This is taking the ground back. <laughs> oh, man, yeah. So what you've got to do all of us, what we need to do is keep praying, keep believing, keep advancing, and do the whack-a-mole. <laughs> now, that whack-a-mole I saw in two areas. Number one is on the national level. Every time that that Antichrist spirit rises up, God's going to club it. Through the church. The church is the club. You understand? Mm -hmm. It's our authority. But number two. The good news is. By parallel anointings. The same thing goes for you in your life. God is whacking. The mole through you. The things of the enemy. The breakthrough. What are the things that you have been believing for physically? What are the things you've been believing for financially? What about your job? What about your children? What about your ministries? What about your marriage? Hmm? What are the different areas? Other relationships? All these different segments of your life. The breaker anointing is on you. It's flowing through you. It's a Christ anointing to sever <coughs> the Antichrist anointing. You are going to be used mightily for the Lord Amen. in so many areas. <coughs> 
You may have thought that it was good in the past, but it's going to get gooder. So get ready for it. Do not allow the enemy's smoke and mirrors, his diversions that he throws up against you, like that mole popping up out of the hole and turning into a roaring lion. Do not allow those to distract. Whack it. Whack it. Whack him. That's right. And keep going. Because the enemy loves to get us off track. Get us focusing on what's going on, the distractions, the buffeting, the, the, and they're legitimate problems that may arise in your life and they have to be dealt with. I'm not saying go into denial. What I'm saying is that we have to address them and deal with them correctly. And today, the inspiration, the revelation, the encouragement that I'm attempting to just crack open your head and pour into you, so to speak, <laughs> is the breaker anointing is there. It's not only in our nation, but it's in your life. Hook them up. Parallel anointings. And God is bringing great breakthrough on all levels. Wow. Exciting. All levels. Yes, it is. Every level. <laughs> Glory to God. I talked a couple of weeks ago about, remember I shared with you how that in the spirit that the Lord took me up and he showed me that dark, wicked spirit. Mm -hmm. And to pray against it. And, and that is what I'm sharing with you now is that Antichrist spirit. If that makes sense to you <clears throat> or not. <laughs> the wickedness, the subtlety of looking, it's false gold. We're well, well able to take the land. Amen. Amen. And it's yours. Every covenant right, every provision Amen. that Jesus has purchased for you by his shed blood is coming to pass in your life. Amen. The breaker anointing is here. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord God, in the name of Jesus Christ, I've done my best to share with the people what it is that's happening in the spiritual realm. At least what you have shown me, my part in the warfare, but my part, here's what I want to, I want to switch this a little bit. Yes, peace and prosperity comes through warfare, but we want to focus not on the warfare, we want to focus on the form of the Lord the breaker anointing, the breakthrough in every one of these areas, the good things that Jesus is bringing into our lives and into our nation and thereby into the world. That's what we focus on. That's what we pray for. That's our magnetic north. That's our future. That's where we're going right now. And so therefore, we thank you for that. Stand with me real quickly. Father God, in Jesus' name at this point, Lord, just to cement this deal, to seal it, to make it stable and fixed, I pray, Lord God, for a release of that revelation and that anointing to come into this room and to flow through the video into every person's life that watches it. I want everybody to get ready right now because we're going to connect with it and we're going to release it. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, 
that which I have seen in the spirit, that which you have birthed on the inside of me, that which you have raised up by anointing in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray and I release unto the people in the name of Jesus Christ right now. That anointing, breaker anointing, breakthrough anointing upon everybody's life right now, release in the name of Jesus Christ. That breaker anointing flowing through our nation at every level. I release in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, I rebuke the Antichrist spirit over our land and over people's lives and parallel every level breakthrough 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 every tentacle that has come forth by the enemy touched in different segments of our society we cut them off in Jesus name breakthrough right now in the name of Jesus. Say this with me out loud. Breakthrough. 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 Breaker anointing. Breaker anointing. Upon my life. And upon our nation. I align myself with it. I align myself with it. I allow it to flow through me. I allow it to flow through me. To break all that the enemy has done. To break all that the enemy has done. In every aspect of my life. In every aspect of my life. My family, my family, my relationships, my relationships, my health, my health, my money, my money, my city, my city, my nation, my nation, my ministry, my ministry. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, I succumb now. I succumb now. To revival. to revival, the spirit and anointing of revival, the spirit and anointing of revival on my life, on my life, and on my nation. And on my nation. Let it come now. Let it come now. I will flow with it. I will flow with it. And it has the power. And it has the power to break the enemy. To break, to break the enemy. Every strategy. Every strategy. Every prison. Every prison. Every deception, every deception, right now, right, right now, now, in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 Praise Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We praise you and we worship you, God. <laughs> you are the Almighty One. You are the victorious one. Yes, Lord God. We praise you. We are winners. We are not losers. Hallelujah. Yes, we reign in life through Christ Jesus. We are more than overcomers. Yes, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We are new creations in the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We are part of the ecclesia. We are part of the gathering. We are part of the body of Christ. We are part of the army. We are warriors. Amen. <laughs> and we take the land. We take it for ourselves. We take it for our families. We take it for our neighbors. We take it for our city. We take it for our nation. We take it. For the Lord Jesus Christ, which is the head of the church, and his will be done. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done in the United States of America as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For God is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Yes. Glory. Victory. Victory. You can be seated for a moment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, oh, I preached myself happy. That's a good thing. 
preach I don't think I've ever preached myself sad, so that'll never that'll never happen, I guarantee you. But right now, we need to give to the Lord. We need to give to the Lord through this portion of ministry. And so I'm going to ask you to go ahead and fill out your tithes and your offerings. If you make out a check, make it the word of life. If you need to give by bank card, use the white envelope. If you have information you need to supply to us, use the blue connection card, please. Fill those out. Those of you that are in the room, those of you that are online, watching by video, go to wordoflifeworldoutreach.org and go to the donation page. And you can give and participate in this offering. And as everybody gives right now, what we're doing is we're giving into the breaker anointing. Do you hear me? Yes. This is not a psychological or financial gimmick in order to get money. If there's anybody anywhere that feels that that may, don't pass it yet. I'm not ready. No, no, no. Bring back the basket. <laughs> Hold on. If there's anybody who uh, feels that you know, like that, that is some kind of a gimmick, then don't give. I don't want your money. Right. Amen. But those of you who connect with mm -hmm. the anointing, the revelation, and the purpose mm -hmm. of what's going through this sermon and through this meeting today, mm -hmm. and you want that activated in your life, plus you're just obeying the Holy Spirit, <laughs> <laughs> then you give.